Hello, everyone. Welcome to our first episode of Barnard Refresh. Barnard Refresh is a new initiative led by Student Life to help reintroduce you to campus resources and staff. Each Friday, we'll do a live broadcast where we encourage you to ask questions in the comments. Today, we're bringing you a rebroadcast of one of our favorite live broadcasts, Transportation Tips. Although we're rebroadcasting this content, our staff is waiting in the wings to answer any questions you leave in the comments. So don't be shy. Enjoy. Everybody, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are going to be talking about the basics of public transportation and tips for navigating around New York City. Um, we're happy to answer any questions that you have. And if you have a question while we are live, please drop it in the comments and we will see that and try to get to all of your questions um, during our session. So um, I'm gonna introduce myself. My name is Ali Emmerich. I am the program director of arts education and I operate out of student life. And I'm gonna pass it over to my colleagues to introduce themselves. Yeah. Hello everyone, Deshaun Cook. I am the Assistant Dean for Student Life and I use he, him, they, them pronouns. Hi, I'm Jess Malcolm. I'm a theater coordinator for the Glicker Milstein Theater and Student Life. Um, we were gonna mention our favorite trains and my favorite train is the D train because it gets you in all the great places and has the best seat. Allie Deshaun, I would really hate for y'all to not get to share your favorite train before I introduce myself, so please. I mean, I love the one train. I take it down to Barnard, but also it can get me all the way down, all the way up, whatever I need. And I live way uptown, so it's perfect. <laughs> and my favorite train is the C train. Um, being a native New Yorker, it was this, the line that I lived off of, so it always holds a special place in my heart. Perfect. Um, I'm Emmy Cardoza, she, her, hers pronouns. I'm the Associate Dean for Student Life. Like Ali, I love the one train. I'm partial to it because I live by it. I'm partial to the west side. I have a lot of pride on everywhere that I live. I'm one of those awful people who is still new to New York and does not hate Times Square. And so the one train gets me to Times Square to see all the Broadway shows when that's a thing. So I love it. Um, great. And with that, we're just going to dive right in with some of the tips. Um, first things first. This might seem really basic, but we love to include it anyway, is before you head out to make sure that you have a transit plan. Sometimes I like to guess, go by feel, this is not really the situation where that works unless you are like Deshaun and native New Yorker and you might just know what shows up where. Um, I would recommend using Google Maps, 
Apple Maps. I don't know what it's actually called, Maple, whatever they called Apple Maps, or um, as one of our colleagues just shared, the Transit app. It's a green icon. So if you look it up in the Play Store or the App Store, again, I don't do Apple. This is not an endorsement for Google, but use a lot of Google products. So the Transit app is really cool because it's a little green icon. When you tap on it, it's like the color of a Spotify. Um, it looks just like this. I don't know if you can see that. Is that weird? Why am I showing my phone? Look at how beautiful that is. So creepily, that shows you my location right now. So don't look too hard. And then it'll pull up what are the buses and trains near you. You can type in an address just like on Google Maps. And part of why that's great is because sometimes I forget buses exist, but they really are the best way to go. Not right now because there's snow on the ground. So, you know, it might be a little party. You might have to jump over a hill to get to where you're going, but good option on some days. Um, and sometimes I think Google's gotten a lot better about including when their thing, things have been modified or rerouted. And so you're not going to get on a train and then discover, just kidding, we're not going to South Ferry today. We're not running at all. And so definitely recommend that you make a plan in advance just to see what the options are. Especially great when you can say, I need to be there by one o'clock and it'll tell you, great, you should leave by X time. Great. Um, cool. And then just as a clarification, so when I moved to New York about five years ago, I came here from Chicago. In Chicago, all of the L trains are color coded and that's it. You take the green line, the red line, the blue line. So generally understanding that the subway map, even though it is color coded, there are going to be different trains on all of them. So the red includes the one, two and the three and they go very different. Well, not very different. They're kind of on the same plane for a while, but then they branch out. And then the blue is not just the blue everywhere. That's where I really got in not the best situation. I hopped on a blue train, thought it was a C, it was an E. The E takes you to Queens. The C takes you up near we live. So um, we, some of us live. Um, but really just paying attention, not just to the color, but the letter or the number associated with the subway line, that'll get you where you need to go. Um, so those are just the super duper basics that you're probably like, Emmy, we already knew all these things. Great, love to include it anyway. And with that, we'll turn it over to Jess. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about like, now you have your transit plan, hopefully, more or less. And now you need to figure out how you're gonna pay for your transit. So you can do that with a Metro card or New York's now introduced the Omni. It may be called OMNY, but I think Omni sounds better. And I did not remember to look up what the OM stands for. So oh my. you can do your own, yeah, oh my New York. Um, you can do your own research <laughs> on that part. Um, and just quickly, I want to shout out if you're following this on Facebook, that um, our colleague who introduced all of us to the transit app um, has posted this in the, uh, the the address there. So shout out. Thank you so much, Yasmin. Also, thanks for watching. Um, so uh, to buy your Metro card, if you're not going to do the Omni New York, which is cool, because if you have like a touchless payment method, like I use my phone mostly for this, um, like if I have Google Pay set up, but you can also do that with Apple Pay. I can't think app pay, I don't know, some cool thing like Emmy came up with with Mapple. Um, they really should hire us. Um, so whatever method you're using for that, you just hold your phone over this. Uh, I'll show the image in a second. You hold your phone over it, unlock the screen, and it'll just use whatever your payment method is when it's set up on your phone. Uh, but if you're not doing that, and you're going to use the old school, not as old school as the token method, but the old school uh, Metro card, I'll show you how you go about getting one of those. So let me get that in here. I miss so, tokens. <laughs> they seem so cool to have that tangible object, but that was, I've been here for 10 years and it's, I didn't get to use those. But if you need a Metro card, you'll go down into a subway station. Hot tip, you cannot get a Metro card from a bus. Um, I tried that a few times when I first got here and I did not work out well. They were not happy with me. Um, but on these two on the side here, you can use either uh, paper or coin money to buy your Metro card, or you can use a debit or credit card. And this one here on the left-hand side can only take uh, debit or credit cards. So just something to keep in mind when you're looking at it. And one other thing is up here at the top, if it's not working, it'll say something in red about it being out of service or taking cash only or taking cards only or something like that. So you'll get some information from this as well. So once you get the subway, you figure this out, you're getting your Metro card you can then look at this sort of old looking screen. Um, and it's a touch screen. It's a really poorly calibrated touch screens on most of these things. And I feel like I just sort of like sit there and tap at it for a bit. Um, oh, and Yasmin is also sharing information about the cost of fares here, which is great. Um, and so you can see this information. I'm now covering my own face though, so I'll take that down. But <laughs> you'll have this information. You can do what you need to with it um, and just give you an idea of what this looks like. 
So you've done that. Maybe you have a Metro card already or someone gave you a Metro card, but you're not sure how much money is on it. You can take your Metro card and swipe it through this device here and the balance will read out on this very old screen. Um, one thing to note about Metro cards is that they have an expiration date, which is kind of mean, um, but you can find that on the back of the card. This is the front, typically how they look. Sometimes they'll have some fun art on them, but pay attention to these expiration dates. And this is also not an advertisement for Supreme, just happened to be the photo I found. Do what you will with that. Um, but pay attention to this. If you are within, I think it's like at some point close to when the expiration date is, if you happen to go to um, the, you know, you go into exchange your card out, you can put your Metro card in, the machine will be like, oh, it's going to expire soon. Do you want to trade? And you can trade your Metro card in for a new Metro card. If you choose not to trade it in, when you get your next Metro card that won't expire for some you know, few years longer, um, then you'll have to pay an extra dollar in addition to the amount of fare that you're going to put on. It's annoying, but it's true. Um, so from there, you got your Metro card. Now you have to get into the subway. You'll just, if you're using the Metro card, you'll just swipe it here. There's some sort of very specific technique for doing this. We all have our method. You can swipe it too fast. You can swipe it too slow. It's kind of like playing Among Us, doing that card swipe reader. So once you get the hang of one of those, this will eventually happen too, but it might take you a few tries. And sometimes they will steal your fare, which is annoying. You can go talk to the desk uh, or the, the uh, attendant that's in the box. Mm -hmm. And this is the Omni. If you're using a touchless payment method, you can just hover your card or your phone over this device. Um, I think that was all I was going to say about how to get these things. And I'll give it back to Deshaun for um, buses and such. Yes. So once you have your transit plan and you've you know, purchased your you know, Metro card or you know, figure out how you're going to, you know, pay. We're going to talk about buses, you know, first. Um, so looking at that tip um, with our lovely viewer Yasmin sent in about fares, because sometimes they will increase and there's no wide announcement about it. You just, you're expected to know it. Um, so, you know, can you, you know, make sure that, you know, you look at those, you know, fare websites and, you know, know how much you're going to spend, especially if you're going on to, um, the bus, you know, if you're paying with cash, you know, or coinage, I should say, because that's much easier than, you know, trying to use dollars on a bus, which I don't think you can do. Uh, so have your coins, exact amount, or you use your credit card, uh, um, your Metro card, swipe it in, and then you gain um, access. You know, something to be aware of, whether you're on the bus or the train, um, is the stop that you need um, to get off. Um, for, you know, trains, the doors will open and close. They will stop at every stop unless, as Ali said, they tell you that they're going express. For buses, you need to sometimes let the, the um, bus driver know that you need to get off. And so you'll see either a yellow pull cord, you'll see a stop button. Um, sometimes you'll see a yellow tape strip, you know, along the sides of the window. Um, so you'll press that and it'll indicate to the bus driver that you need to get off at the next available stop. Sometimes what you'll find is that if no one has indicated that they need to stop and the bus driver sees that at the next stop coming up, no one's waiting for the bus, they may not stop. They may just bypass it, especially if they're running behind you know, schedule. So be mindful of your surroundings, especially if you're wearing earphones, you know, make sure that your volume is low enough where you can hear the bus driver talking and announcing what stops are coming up um, next. Sometimes they'll give a heads up and say, hey, you know, anyone need to stop? If you say nothing, then they're going to bypass it. Um, so you can also use the GPS apps um, while you're on the bus just to get a sense of you know when your arrival time should be, especially if you need to catch another bus so you make it to your final destination. So you can time it um, to see, okay, when I get to this stop, I'm, I'm going to have to wait three minutes, you know, for my you know next bus to you know come. Um, or if it says it's going to be 20 minutes, you know, maybe especially now that it's January, you may pop into a little coffee shop for a little bit so you're not out in the cold until your bus is scheduled to arrive. Um, and you know, when it comes to those announcements, sometimes they'll also let you know if they're going to skip a stop. Um, same thing happens on the trains as well. So if you know that they're skipping the stop that you need, you may have to get off the bus or the train at that moment and wait for the next available um, bus or train so this way you can get to your destination. Hey, Deshaun, can you imitate for us how the train operator might sound when they're making this announcement? <laughs> oh, yes, my favorite, especially, you know, you get to, you know, um, you're at 100 and, you know, 10th Street, you know, you know that 116th is next, you may hear. <laughs> Stand clear of the closing doors. And that's what you hear. You got no information beforehand, but for whatever reason, stand clear of the closing doors always comes through clearly. 
Um, so, you know, having your transit maps, you know, also looking at, you know, the map on, you know, the train or on the bus, you know, to know what stops are coming up next. It's very helpful just in case you get that, you know, conductor that has a faulty, faulty mic for some reason. And I feel like all of them have faulty mics. That's why I look for the, you know, trains that have the scrolling marquees with the automated, you know, kind of electronic voice because I've never had an issue hearing what stops are next with those trains. Yeah. Um, so speaking of mm -hmm. listening to things, sometimes when you're on the subway, they're going to say, this train is now running express. And so that means it's going to stop, skip stops. It's not going to go to all the stops that you're expecting it to go to. You can find out, you know, on the subway map what express stops it might it might stop at, um, or it might say it's running local. So you might be thinking you're on an express train, and then it's going to start running local, and you're going to hit every stop. Um, so you do have to pay attention to those um, and check your map out. Uh, there's also going to be schedule changes. These happen a lot at late nights and weekends where, you know, they might skip um, a certain station for a period of weeks on during nights and weekends. Um, they, there's also often um, modifications for holidays. They will post this modified um, information in the subways. Uh, and you can usually, if it's a closure, you're going to see sometimes they'll put, um, what is it called, caution tape or a bright pink like ribbon across the entrance. And that means that it's probably closed because they're not running trains at that station. Sometimes it's only in one direction. So you wanna pay attention to that too. Um, but they do post the signs um, and with all the signs that they post, you'll see um, that, that color that Emmy was talking about. And then you'll see the number or the letter inside that. So I take the one all the time. So I always skim for that red circle. And then I look for the one and see, you know, are the things that are happening affecting me or not? So keep an eye out for those. Your apps will tell you. They automatically, most of them will automatically update that info in real time. The one, which is you know the closest to our campus, that's undergoing a lot of track replacements right now, especially uptown. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, but again, use those apps. They will be your lifesavers. Can I just say my favorite thing is when they're just randomly like, you get on at 116 and they're like, running express to 23rd street if you need to get to any of those stops in between go all the way to 23rd then hop on the uptown train and come on back so mm -hmm. that's when we got to make that call do i just go to a bus or do i just you know have an underground tour of the city maybe you'll see something fun while you're down there and they often when it's something like that they might run a shuttle bus a lot of times they do that mm -hmm. sometimes the shuttle bus is worth your while sometimes it's not sometimes you wait for the shuttle bus for an unending period of time I personally avoid the shuttle buses, but everybody on this, on these faces right here knows that I have a phobia of the bus, no real phobia, but I feel like they cause me a lot of anxiety. So I have go out of my way to avoid buses, mm -hmm. but that's just my quirk. Buses are nice, just love them. I do really love buses. And I hope that after preparing for this, uh, this session that we've all shared some bus tips with Allie to help alleviate some of your anxiety. Yeah. So hopefully this helps you as well as the students watching. Um, <laughs> One other thing I wanted to add about that that I didn't mention when I was talking about the Metro cards is that you can get a free transfer. Um, so when you're using your Metro card or if you're using the Omni uh, touchless method, as long as it's the same payment method, you have a free transfer if you uh, have it within two hours. So if let's say you start out on a bus, you're, you know, you've made your transit map, you need a bus and a train to get to wherever you're going, you can swipe in or use your Omni, whichever on the bus. And then when you swipe into the the um, train, it'll count as a free transfer, um, unless you have an unlimited Metro card, in which case it doesn't matter, but that's a separate story and probably most people aren't using unlimited at this point. But if you are, they're just more expensive and you get all the rights you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, another thing that we did wanna make sure that we talked about, just brought this up, is about accessibility. So buses are accessible for people who use wheelchairs. They do have a ramp that folds out, the bus lowers. I think they lower the ramp automatically just because the step can be kind of high. And so um, that is, in some sense, why buses could be a better option. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, not all the subway stations have elevators or are accessible. I believe the closest one to campus is on the one train, it's 125th Street or does 113th have it? Unfortunately, the, the stop right by campus, 116th on the one street doesn't have an elevator. And so it's not accessible. We have um, had students before who have really struggled with getting, um, just being able to use transit for that very reason. Obviously there are ways that we can work with cards to make sure you have the support that you need. Um, 
but it's always good to look that up in advance just so you know which are the stops that have elevators and then I don't know if they publish whether or not those elevators are in service, but it's you can always call the MTA, try to find out that information. Yeah, um, sometimes they'll have announcements, um, but also the transit app um, will also sometimes let you know if there's stations down, um, stations that have elevators or escalators that are out of service. Perfect. Um, other things to note, uh, we wanted to share just a few and by a few, I mean two, commonly used buses that may be beneficial to you as students. One of them is the N60 Select bus. Why is it called Select? Because it's selectively more difficult to, is that, I don't know if that's the word you want to use, it's special. What's great about this bus is if you fly in and out of LaGuardia, this is the easiest thing. You hop on the bus, you turn on your headphones, you blank out, you look out, you're at campus and you can hop right on out. And so it's a very, um, convenient bus in that way. But as a select bus, this is where you have to pay before you get on the bus. You can still pay with your Metro card. Well, actually looking at this, you have to pay with your Metro card. You can't use cash. Um, so um, just as this photo for us, so there's gonna be a blue machine outside. This will also be at the airport. They have color coded on this. We think this happens in real life too. You can see at the top of the machine, one says to push start. You go up to the screen, you push start. It'll ask you to select your bus. You pay with your Metro card, and then this little receipt's gonna come out in the red. Um, and that you grab that receipt, that is not garbage. That is they for some reason check. Never happened to me, but it has happened to people I know. Folklore, I guess. But um, but though sometimes the bus operators will come on, they'll say, Let's see your ticket, make sure you actually paid, you show them your ticket, you're good to go. Um, I think that's also how you can transfer to other buses from the select. Is that true, Jess? Okay, Deshaun says it is. Hold on. So, yeah, yeah, hold on to your receipt for your transfer. Yeah. Um, so we just wanted to note that. I don't know all the select buses. This is the one that we think is probably the most common common that you're going to encounter, just especially if you fly in and out of LaGuardia or if you're trying to go down, I don't know, 125th. If you're trying to take the scenic route to Queens, it's another option as well. Um, great. Another bus that is my favorite bus, I've got a favorite train and a favorite bus, is the M4. So the M4 runs all the way down Broadway. It crosses at 110th Street, which is right by Central Park, and then it runs down Fifth Avenue. So what's nice about that is if you are interested in doing Museum Mile, again, years here, so love the tour. I've already been to the Met twice in the new year. That's 35 days, twice I've been to the Met. Wow. <laughs> um, what a nerd. But so the M4 bus is a really great and convenient way, because again, it'll stop right by campus, 116th Street and Broadway. You can get on this bus and also, one of the things that's really nice about buses is that even though they can feel intimidating, because again, you've got to pull the cord, you've got to flag when you need to get off somewhere, you can at least see what the neighborhood looks like and kind of orient yourself to where it is that you're going. So this will be a great way to kind of see, okay, this is what happens when we go across town. This is an easy way to get to the Met, the Guggenheim, what other museums are in that area. I clearly just go to the Met. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that you were aware of that option. If you're coming back to campus on the Met, Where's it pick up? Like Park Avenue? So it's a couple avenues over. Madison. It picks up on Madison. Perfect. Madison. So again, use your transit app or Google Maps. You'll be able to pull it up and see what the ride back looks like. But it will still bring you back to campus really conveniently. And true story, whenever I'm, my cat's visiting, whenever I'm on a bus, I always have like my Google map out so I know where I'm going to get off and when I need to like touch that tape or pull the cord or whatever. Because mm -hmm. that's why I get so anxious about them. Unless you're on a really crowded bus that's usually, you know, you can usually see out just fine. Like sometimes mm -hmm. it's a really crowded bus pre-COVID times and unfortunately a few times since COVID. Um, but for the most part, you can still see out. So you can still sort of see the, you know, what, what street numbers you're passing and all that stuff. So it's not, you know, not too bad. Um, Speaking of crowded buses, sometimes you may have to find your true voice um, when you need to get off because if you're in the center of the bus and your stop is coming up, you may have to loudly let people know like, I need to get off, like I need you to move out the way or step off the bus so this way I can get off and not miss my stop. So sometimes it's difficult to do that, but if you don't want to kind of do a tour of the city, <laughs> you may have to speak up and get the attention of some folks to move out your way. One, yeah, exactly. Like one thing related to that too is like there's a front and a back door and often the back door is the door that you get off of. Sometimes the bus driver, they'll have to like manually press a button to open it and they won't necessarily see you getting off. And so they're ready to take off, but you have to like 
yell out back door so that someone knows mm -hmm. that they're trying to open the back door. And when I didn't know to do that, there were some very kind people who yelled it out for me. And I was like, oh, okay, moving forward, I will yell out back door despite my introverted nature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. Um, and one more thing while we're talking about buses really quickly, there's also something called an express bus. Most of those uh, run from Manhattan into some of the outer boroughs. Um, so you can take an express bus to the Bronx, to Queens, to Brooklyn. I used to take one from Brooklyn when I was feeling uh, extravagant and wanted to spend the extra money. They do cost quite a bit more. Um, so it's like 650, I think right now it might've gone up. It's been quite a few years since I've taken one, um, but they're more like charter buses if you had like varsity sports teams when on your high school. Um, so more like that. So a bit more expensive, but they are an option if you're going further out. They tend to run more on a the scale of getting a, a business person to a, a big office timeline. <laughs> So we're going to just quick breeze by. We're almost out of time. So we're going to breeze through the ferries. Um, if you want, I'll drop it in the chat. But if you want more info, you can visit ferry.nyc. Um, and there's also the um, Staten Island Ferry, which is siferry.com. Um, but there are a number of ferries. And you know my colleagues here will jump in with their stories. But there's the East River Ferry, the South Brooklyn Ferry, the Rockaway Ferry the Astoria Ferry, the Soundview Ferry, and there are two new ferries this year. One is the St. George Ferry, and one is the Coney Island Ferry. Um, so those are launching. I don't actually know if they launched yet, but they are launching in 2021. And then there's also the Governor's Island Ferry, which is, I think, seasonal and weekends. Um, and then uh, the Staten Island Ferry, which I mentioned, is free, and it runs every 30 minutes, but the last boat is either like 11 p.m. or 11.30. Um, but again, I'll drop in the chat that information. And for the other ferries, they run about the same as a regular Metro Card fare. Um, but I don't know, colleagues, do you want to tell any ferry stories? Nope, no ferry stories here. I know Staten what, Island Ferry is really fun. You can yeah. just go take it when you don't know what you want to do with your afternoon. Go take the Staten Island Ferry. It's a nice little free boat ride. Or go visit Staten Island. I haven't spent much time in Staten Island. <laughs> <laughs> and folks in New Jersey, you can take the ferry that brings you from Exchange Place in New Jersey to World Trade Center. Um, you can also take the path one stop, um, but if it's a nice day and you want some fresh air, you can also um, take the ferry across the water to World Trade Center and vice versa as well. I think the only other thing we didn't talk about is um, uh, Port Authority. Um, mm. So the Port Authority is you know, a big hub. And if you're going, um, if you're not taking a train and you're taking a bus, the likelihood is your bus will pick up near there. Like if you're going to Connecticut, you're going to Philadelphia. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the buses pick up there. I know I take it a lot uh, to visit my family. Sorry. Yeah. Greyhound buses will, but if you're taking mega bus, that's just on that's some random street. And wow. both buses on a random street too. Mm -hmm. But like Peter Pan, Greyhound, Greyhound, all of those lines. New Jersey transit buses, also yep. Port Authority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's, you know, I am not afraid of those buses for some reason. <laughs> uh, and also we didn't talk about Metro North, so you can get places on Metro North to read more about it. Um, but now I'll turn it over to Emmy. Perfect, so as we start wrapping up, we're just gonna share some of the tips that we've heard over our time or gained as our time as New Yorkers. Um, I'll kick us off and then we'll kind of go around. If you have questions, feel free to drop those in the chat or comments if you're watching this live. Uh, first things first, what, one of my friends told me as soon as I moved here that was really useful was to download a subway map onto your phone. So it's been helpful for me because often I end up on trains that don't easily have the line printout or I just get confused as to where we are. And so I'll just pull up the subway map, try to figure out where I am, if there's a transfer coming up. and. Um, kind of stay oriented, especially if I'm going somewhere that's really far, I kind of count the stops the whole time on the ride. Um, it's really good when you're like in Times Square, because again, I spend time there, and there's you're the NQRW platform, and you can see that one of them's coming, and you're like, is this gonna get me where I need to go? I never know. Some of them get you the same place, and some of them really don't. And so it's good to be able to just pull out that photo that you have saved to your phone and reference it later. Did you use an app to download that, like a static subway map app, or how did you do it? I searched on Google. I've really been endorsing Google too much. <laughs> um, <laughs> I actually endorse Supreme. So. M MTA, Subway Map. Found one, it looked accurate, I downloaded it. It has not led me astray yet. 
So. It's, and it's perfect during these times, especially like COVID, because it, typically you would just like awkwardly hover over someone sitting down to like see the map on the train. And you probably don't want to do that now because you want to keep your distance. So having it on your phone um, is the best option right now. Yep. I also keep a subway map, like an actual printed mm -hmm. subway map poster right by my door so that if I ever have any questions, I can just go look at it and figure out where I need to go beforehand. But mm -hmm. I'm a visual person, so that works really well for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, something else that we wanted to talk about is that, you know, especially um, as it concerns trains, um, like the train will pull up, you know, you're on the platform um, and the car right in front of you is an empty car. Um, and all the other ones seem crowded and there are different reasons why, you know, this, you know, this may be. Um, so we just want to give you some, you know, quick tips as to why that is. A common one is that, especially in the summer, there's no AC um, on that train car. So you either find a crowded one that, you know, has AC, or if you're like me, I rather have the space and no one around me. So I will sit in a hot car until my stop. I'm like that too. Yeah. <laughs> there have definitely been times when an empty car is pulled up and I'm like, oh, lucky me. And then you get on, and your nose immediately tells you there's a reason why this car is empty. And so write it for an extra stop. Try to warn the people as you flee to the next car at the next stop and say, it doesn't smell great in here. So that's just a fun anecdote that is also kind of true in the summer when it's true. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like spilled stuff. Like people won't go in there because something has spilled. Or I've seen on one of those uh, Instagram accounts, like somebody let their pet loose in the subway car and you know I would get in that car <laughs> I don't know if it was a snake or a tarantula I definitely would not maybe if it was a cat um, no. yeah my best friend got to hold a I don't remember a very large snake on the train once a few years ago the owner was like do you want to hold my snake and she was like yeah sure <laughs> so both things can happen on the train I love New York um, the other other thing I'd really like to add, I think, is like we've mentioned a lot of things and like, you know, Emmy's counting stops and Allie has her poster and like, you know, I'm watching out the window for my my street signs. But like you'll get more comfortable doing this as you go. Mm -hmm. Like it's not you're not going to spend your whole time using transit in New York being like anxious, like, oh, my God, where am I? Um, that'll pass. But it might feel like that the first few times, especially when you're going to new areas, new neighborhoods, you will get comfortable. You will get used to this. There'll be a point when you don't check. I half the time I leave mo more than half the time I leave the house and I don't check. I'm just get on the train. I know it is going to transfer to this other train that I need at this one stop. And then I just go for it. So don't stress this is going to be the rest of your life during your time um, in New York. It's, it's not. You'll get more comfortable with it. But start out knowing where you're going. Sure. And just the yeah. first time you took a train was that when you after you moved in at Barnard? Yeah, yeah. So the first the first time I was ever on public transit was when I moved myself to Barnard. No, no parents, no nobody. And I was like, well, I'm in New York. I'm gonna take the subway. Um, from I'm I'm from a really small town, and I was told I was gonna get robbed immediately, and I did not. And I got to the Apple Store. I bought my MacBook, and now I'm a PC user. So <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But Jess was an alum, so if she, That's you know, small town can mm -hmm. do it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. Like, so I've gotten to the point where I can take a nap on the train mm -hmm. and not miss my stop. I have not missed my stop because I've, I've come close to missing my stop, but I've woken up just before the door started closing and jumped off the, you know, train at my stop. Muscle memory. Yeah, it's exactly. weird. You really do get that muscle memory. I've yeah. seen so many times people wake up and they're like, oh, yeah. And they look around and they get off at their stop and there they go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they don't fall over on other people somehow. Sometimes, sometimes I've seen it. <laughs> That's the truth. Um, other tips that people had? I think um, nights and weekends, yeah, it's a yeah. big one. Um, so sometimes like the schedule changes, especially for express trains. Um, so nights and weekends, um, oftentimes all trains will run on the local um, lines. So you want to be mindful of that. I. I'm always confused, like no matter how many years, decades I've been taking the train, I never know when that switchover you know, happens, but I'm always upset when it does. Um, so, you know, be, you know, mindful of that, especially if you have to travel a long distance that it may take a little longer if your train is running local and you don't have that express you know, option. Um, oftentimes on the weekends, you know, trains will run a more local um, schedule. Um, also kind of interesting fact, um, on the weekends, it's a prime time for train work to happen. So you, if you take the F train, it may be running on the C line 
Oh so my God. hopefully you get the updates yeah. <laughs> about that and you're not going to the F station waiting to get mm -hmm. on the train because one will not be there. You'll have to walk, you know, a couple of avenues over to another, you know, line and take the train from there. Or, you know, as I just mentioned earlier, sometimes they'll supplement that with shuttle buses. Um, but when train work is happening and all the train lines are running on different tracks, it can get really confusing and take a little more time to get to your destination. So you want to plan that out. So you may have to leave, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes um, than you normally would. Um, to make it to your destination on time. Also, we've talked a lot about, you know, transferring from trains, mm -hmm. um, from train to train. Like I know Deshaun is a master of this, but I'm the kind of person who, if I'm going somewhere and I know I need to be there at a specific time and I have the option of taking three trains to get there or taking one train to get there. And, you know, the app tells me it's going to be like eight extra minutes if I only take that one train, uh, the single train, not the one necessarily. Um, I will take a single train line because I don't like to take that gamble that my transfer is not going to get there right when it's scheduled to, and I'm not going to get onto it. And then I'm going to wind up being 45 minutes late. So I'm the kind of person. So, you know, it depends what your schedule's like. You may want to just take mm -hmm. the five extra minutes and stay on one train. Yeah, or you can be like me and play double dutch and like, you know, you look for that marquee and you <laughs> pop your head out of the train to see because if it's coming three minutes or under for the express train, I'll step out and, you know, wait for it. But if it's any more than three minutes, then I'm popping back in um, to the train and just going local. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we I talked a little bit earlier about the M60 select select bus as the way, probably the easiest way to get to LaGuardia. What about the other airports? What do you all think? So for JFK? For Newark, that's what it's called, right? Jeez, I almost thought of the yeah, airport Newark, code. I'm looking for the How do you how do you rank the airports and how do you get there if you think it's the best? I love Newark Airport, but I'm also partial to Jersey now <laughs> since I live here. Um, and the best way to get there is via NJ Transit. Um, NJ Transit has an app, so you buy your tickets there. So similar to the select bus service, you need to purchase your ticket beforehand, and you also need to activate it um, before you get on the train, because oftentimes it's underground and service is terrible um, once you're on NJ Transit. So definitely make sure you activate your ticket beforehand, because the conductor will hold up the train and not move it um, until you show that you've activated your ticket and we'll kick you off the train. I've seen them kick many a people, um, many a person off the train because they have not activated their no ticket. Um, and I believe it's the Northeast Corridor line um, that brings you to Newark Airport. Um, but you also have to check to see if the train um, is actually stopping at Newark Airport. Not every train on that line stops there. Um, so just check the schedules. You know, NJ Transit has a great um, interactive um, app where you can check schedules and say, this is my starting um, destination. This is where I want to end up, Newark Airport. And it'll tell you exactly which time trains um, will drop you off at that destination. And then you have like air trains and shuttles and things like that that will bring you to the terminal that you need. Speaking about arriving, this is totally a tangent from the airport. Sorry, Emmy. But if you're using Google Maps, you can put you can set arrival time or a departure time when you're looking someplace up. And so sometimes you want to like reverse engineer your plan. You can do that on Google Maps. I realized we forgot to say that earlier. Mm -hmm. Any anyone gonna vouch for JFK? Poor JFK. All <laughs> forever. It's so hard to get to from here. Yeah. Yeah, because you have to pop on the A train, right? I think the A train yeah. brings you to yeah. JFK. And what I like about JFK, like you can get to many more places than mm -hmm. Newark um, because it's international, super international in so many destinations, but it is a pain to get to. Where I used, where I grew up in Brooklyn was a 10 minute drive uh, from JFK. So that was the preferred airport then um, when you could just hop in a cab or you know have someone drop you off. But yeah, if, if you're nowhere close to JFK, it's inconvenient. When you're coming home, like that's the worst. You get you in your flight mm -hmm. and into JFK, and then you're. Tra well, I live all the way uptown, so then I'm like on the A train for three days. It feels like I get so crappy. <laughs> yeah. Luggage. It takes longer. Sometimes I'm like, I flew to Florida in less time than yes. I did <laughs> to where I live. Exactly. It's wild, but I mean, yes goes several more places, much bigger airport, much more posh. So if you have any of those perks of like free airport lounge access, I don't really think those exist at LaGuardia, but they do have an FAO Schwartz now with a giant bear in the front. So you can take a photo <laughs> with him. And I think they have a Shake Shack now. They just redid LaGuardia. At least, really nice. the, at least the Southwest 
section. I recognize there are probably other planes that fly out of there, and I only fly southwest out of LaGuardia. <laughs> I think there's still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you're not an airplane or like a Greenhow bus person, you also have Amtrak, um, which you can take, and it picks up at um, New York Penn Station, um, so it can take you many different places. If you want to go down to D.C., you know, for the weekend, you can hop on an Amtrak train. Boston, Philly, it's great. Mm -hmm. I love Amtrak. I feel like we're just a, a, a numtots advertisement right now, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you all know that that means. But anyway, we have all your mass transit needs here. Yeah. <laughs> so great. Any other closing tips? Um, if you're worried about, I did forget to mention this. If you're worried about possible construction going on, there is an app that um, it's a website that started originally for weekend track updates and that sort of thing, but now it runs all the time. It's called Weekender.info. I believe it's .info, um, and that is live all throughout the week and really helpful. It's also just nice to look at. They designed it in a very visually appealing way, so it gives you the information you need um, easily if you're worried about track construction or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you guys, like email us too. Like if you're like, I'm really nervous. One of us will answer you. Don't worry. I say it to my office mates all the time. Like I'm really nervous. I have to take a cross town bus. Just help me. Mm -hmm. oh, cross town buses. That's why I like the West side. Cause it is <laughs> same on one side, go down a train. Don't worry about how do I get over there? You know, I don't. <laughs> well, there's there's the uh, the M66 that goes cross town. There's the M86 that goes cross town. M86 is a select bus, so it works like the M60. Then there's also I think an M72. All those things will get you across the park if you're still stressed about it. Mm -hmm. um, not a hot tip, but a fun fact. There's a Broadway show a few years ago called In Transit. So if you love transit and Broadway, there is an acapella musical for you starring Justin Guarini, the first runner up in the first season of American Idol. I saw it twice. <laughs> <laughs> so, look it up on Spotify, In Transit, the Broadway musical. I think it closed in less than a year, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you kept it open for as long as, <laughs> I, I, actually, I actually think I saw it three times. <laughs> yeah. Great. Oh, right. And there's a raffle. Oh, my gosh. How did we forget? If you are attending because you promised us the raffle and you're like, that's been 40 minutes and they haven't told us about this raffle, um, we will be dropping the Google form into the chat or comments of whatever space you're watching this in. We will leave it up for an hour after this ends for you to enter this raffle for transit themed gifts, such as Metro cards, maybe some transit socks. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe an app recording of the musical in transit. <laughs> we don't know. Um, no, we'll definitely be giving out at least Metro cards and then I believe socks because, you know, socks kind of be, they're like one size fits all. Um, great. I think that's pretty much it. There's also a transit museum. Unfortunately, it's closed right now because of the pandemic, but hopefully when it reopens, you can go and hop on like old trains that they've retired. You can have your little Instagram photo shoot with like a train from the 1900s. Um, and there's a line, I don't know which one it is, where apparently you can ride and it when it turns around at the end of the line, it goes through an old station that's like fixed up to look like that. I don't know what train it is. Take all the trains and see if you can find it. And then email us and tell us what point it is. Maybe it's the M. Maybe it's the M. Yeah. Um, we'll try I don't not to randomly end up in the train yeah. yard. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. No, no ending up in train yards. <laughs> or bus yards. <laughs> that can happen too. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I lost my wallet on a bus once and got it back two days later and all of my stuff was still in it. So see, see how amazing New York is and it gets <laughs> such a bad rap. It really shouldn't. Truly. So great. And with that, we hope that this has alleviated some of your stress. And again, if you get lost, not the worst thing in the world. It's just a fun opportunity to explore. And mm -hmm. so um, feel free to email us if other questions come up, studentlife at barnard.edu. Um, Make sure you enter the raffle. We would love to reward you for staying with us for the last, oh, it's the sixth train. The last stop is City Hall. See, Yasmin has all Yasmin been. knows everything. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why Yasmin wasn't in this. I know. 
Because she's also a native New Yorker. She's mm -hmm. probably like, all this stuff is real basic, you know? <laughs> and maybe it was, but some of us had to learn it really recently. <laughs> <laughs> um, perfect. So I guess with that, thank you so much for joining us and reach out if anything else comes up. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, thank everyone. you. Hello again. Thank you so much for joining the rebroadcast of Transit Tips. Um, it was such a treat for me to um, be reminded of all the amazing tips and tricks for navigating the city on public transportation. Um, you all may have noticed the mention of a raffle in the broadcast um, that only applied to the original um, airing of you know, the, the, um, the broadcast, but we will have Treat Yourself Tuesday following every um, Barnard Refresh Friday Q&A. Um, so come to the Futter Field, you know, the lawn um, outside of Diana Center, you know, right um, across from Milstein Center as well, um, and interact with student life and, you know, other offices that will invite um, to join us for the um, Barnard Refresh program. Um, coming up, you know, this Tuesday, um, from 12 p.m. until supplies last, we'll have crispy, you know, fruit chips, and we'll also have some Kibo chickpea chips, chips um, as a fun snack for everyone to enjoy. So please step by the table and interact with us. Um, we're very much so looking forward to meeting as many people on campus um, during that time. We also have our Cap Camp Millie series that is happening today. So again, looking for fun things to do on campus. Student life um, will be that office that will provide these opportunities to you. Um, so please, 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 please stop by Kent Millie today, um, 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Um, on the lawn as well. And if you ever have any questions about the Barnard Refresh series or Kent Millie series, you can always email Barnard Student Life um, at studentlife at barnard.edu. Again, that's studentlife at barnard.edu. You all enjoy the rest of your Fridays, um, and we look forward to seeing you um, throughout this series over the summer. <laughs>